So our first use of Instabug is going to actually be to catch exceptions in our JavaScript code. So looking at this get number function that we've got, we make a fetch request to a remote API to get a random number. We then store that in state. Well, what happens if, say, the server's down or something I do a lot is I make a typo uh, in that request URL. And when I make a request to this URL, it's throwing an error, which this API is going to do. What happens? Right now, the user's just going to be alerted uh, that an error has occurred. It tells them something did go wrong, but there's no way for us to know about that unless we see that happen in production uh, or someone tells us about it through whatever means you have out there. With Instabug, we can kind of do that automatically. And to do that is pretty straightforward. What we'll want to do is say instabug.report JS exception. And then we can just go ahead and pass the whole error object. And this error object is coming as a, an argument to the callback function uh, within our catch. Or if you've got a try catch uh, block, it's that same, same concept. An error is going to be passed to it with information about it. So what we've got here is a typo in my URL. So that's going to throw an error, uh, which means these then are going to be skipped and it's going to get into this catch block. So what I need to do is actually rebuild the application and I have to rebuild the application again because I'm running it in release mode so we can go ahead and test these Instabug integrations, these different uh, tools which only work in a release or a production build. So because of that, I can't just reload the JavaScript uh, like we typically would in our normal development environment. We actually need to go ahead and re rebuild it each time. And this doesn't mean you have to do it every time for everything you change. It's just while we're working on these Instabug pieces. So we do see here an error occurred, which means we got past that Instabug.ReportJS exception to the alert block. So if I go back to Instabug now, and I'm just on my dashboard, over here you can go to crashes, and it's not showing anything right now. Okay, and after a little bit, it typically does take a little bit of time. It'll go ahead and tell us that some error did occur. And if we go into it, uh, we do see some information, but it's not, uh, not super useful, let's say it that way, to actually parse whatever this means, where's the error occurring. And that's kind of what this, this crash is not symbolicated. So what we can do is actually go ahead and click that. And what I really like about Inspug is it just tells you exactly what to do, exactly what commands to run to get things. Uh, so we do need to drop a source map in here to go ahead and basically parse that source that we, or the output it gave us into something usable for us. So I'll just go ahead and copy this. And then I can go over to my terminal. I'll paste it in there and run it. It doesn't take too long to run this. Um, a quick tip would be to actually put this in like a yarn script or an NPM script, excuse me. And then you could just say yarn run uh, iOS build or iOS colon source map. And then you can just go ahead and grab that. There's other options where you could automate it more, but I typically don't automate things until absolutely necessary. So that's going to give us this iOS source map dot JSON. Uh, there's likewise a command to do the exact same thing for Android. Uh, once you've got the Android version of doing that, you can go ahead and upload it in a similar spot. So with that all said, let's go ahead and uh, reveal this in Finder. Okay, and so here we've got our source map. I'll go ahead over here, drop that in here. Okay, files uploaded. Uh, we've got our source map, so we can go back here. And then what it's going to do is give us some better information. Uh, it's still not super easy to figure out what's going on, but we can kind of see we've got this parse error and we can kind of start walking into this. So we've got promises. We know this is something related to a promise. Uh, we're looking at timers. We can kind of start working backwards to figure out what's going on. You can go ahead and grab other information from Instabug to see kind of what's going on. You can also see the number of affected users, number of occurrences, uh, all that kind of stuff to kind of get that. 
So you could even even try repro steps since this is happening on app load. It's not giving us those, but you can see you can start gathering a lot of information to see what's going on, where it's going on, to really start uh, figuring out these errors are occurring. And so that's kind of the a basic way to just find out JavaScript related errors are happening or exceptions are happening in your production application by using instabug.report.js exception.